Good evening. I'm Courtney Marshall. I'm the president and CEO of the Wichita State University Alumni Association. And it's my pleasure to welcome our university president, Dr. John Bardo. Hello. How are you tonight? I'm very well. Good to be here. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Well, welcome everyone that's joining us tonight. This is our first virtual alumni town hall. Um, we initially had this idea this last summer. We mentioned it in the Shocker magazine. And so here we are tonight, our first one. We're going to see how it goes. We're hoping that we get lots of interest. And we've got some questions that some people submitted beforehand. And then we're currently live and you can submit questions to us right now. But one of the reasons that we wanted to have this alumni town hall is that we have over 100,000 alumni worldwide. And so we as an alumni association get questions from virtually everywhere and um, we have a very vast reach. So we compiled some of the questions that we've received beforehand. We're going to, like I said, receive questions during the evening and we're going to go ahead and just get started. Great. Okay. So many of our alumni don't have a chance to visit campus and see all the new things that are underway. I mean, you and I are here every day, and if you're not here every day, it's constantly changing. It really is. So what would you like some of our alumni to know about what's happening at their alma mater you today? Know, I think, if, uh, if first of all, I say, if you have a chance to come by and to come back to Wichita, you ought to take a look because your campus has always been beautiful. It was beautiful when you were a student here, and it's even prettier today. And as we expand onto what used to be the golf course and make the east side of the campus, uh, it is really looking both, we have a very quaint and traditional old campus, and now we have this new part that really fits the 21st century. And so I would say that uh, the alums that I've met who hadn't been back in a while were really quite stunned at how beautiful the campus is and how it really is speaking to tomorrow. Excellent. Is the WSU student experience today different than it was 10 or 20 years ago? You and I have been out of school for a little while. We have. Um, uh, and you know, in addition to that, one of the questions that we have, uh, are students different today? Yeah, both are true. I, you know, my, my uh, relationship with Wichita State started in 1973. So I've got to watch a lot of generations going through this institution. And we all share in common that we're all human. But each generation grows up with a different set of stresses. And uh, what my generation grew up with the Vietnam War. So you had people coming back from war who had been in some pretty ugly situations and were trying to come back and, and regroup. But what we see is that each generation is different. So this generation really came of age uh, during the Great Recession. And so for a lot of people that are in school now, uh, making sure that they have a place to work, that they have the skills, uh, that they know what their career is going to look like is much more important to them than it was for past generations. Now they care deeply about a lot of social issues and they mm -hmm. care deeply about the environment, but they very much care about uh, what's going to happen to me and how. So we're responding to that and we're, we're assisting them to get what they need. But you'll see every generation is a little different in the things they care about. Excellent. So one of the topics that I hear about a lot is the Innovation Campus. I get questions about mm -hmm. what's happening. Um, we uh, thought there it would take a while for some of the buildings right. to be built, and now we're asking for approval for some additional buildings. So would you talk a little bit about where we're at with the expansion sure. and what the next steps are? Sure. One of the really big things that we're working on now is trying to change vernacular, trying to change the name. And so we're now talking about us as an innovation-based university mm -hmm. with a new part to the campus. We're calling it the east extension of the campus. Um, and, and what we're really trying to do is to create an educational community that is flexible, that's capable of moving with whatever occurs, uh, because the world is changing so fast. And uh, we have businesses on the campus, we have uh, students who are doing internships, uh, we have uh, academic buildings, and we're, <clears throat> with luck, we'll have a hotel, mm -hmm. we'll have restaurants, uh, and uh, it's a place that we're looking for the community to come. We want the people of Wichita to feel like this is their place. And so we're looking at how do we do placemaking as well as creating a place where new products are created, new research is done, students have an opportunity to work on real projects while they're undergraduates, uh, and they have a chance to get a really first-class education that will keep them going for the rest of their lives. Can you talk a little bit more about the placemaking? Um, yeah, placemaking is really important. Um, 
traditionally universities were kind of, uh, we used to call them ivory towers, right? You, know, you would come for four years and then you would go back to the real world. And, and what we're attempting to do now is to say that universities, because of the nature of what's driving the economy, what's driving society, we're now in the middle of everything. And so what we're looking to do is to say, well, we can't be isolated. We can't be separate. It has to be a place that you want to come, even if you're not in class, that you want to come and hang out and you want to be here. So we have a makerspace, for example, on campus. You don't have to be associated with the campus at all. You can join the makerspace. And you may be making a product or making a dollhouse for your child right next to a person with a PhD in physics who's doing something totally different. Uh, and that's good. You want to have those collisions. Right. We want to have places, so dog watering holes where the, the, you, know, you can bring your dog and have a walk or throw a Frisbee or have a picnic. But the, the idea being that we're not separate. We're not isolated. We're of Wichita and we want the Wichita community to feel like we care about them and we care about their future. So we're going to be, as we kind of build out the skeleton of these big buildings, uh, we're going to be looking very carefully at what do we do to make this a place that you want to come when you don't have to be here. Right. Well, I know I personally, I come up here in the evening and walk my dogs right. because the space is so phenomenal. And we kind of started this process with the Sip and See event a few weeks ago. And we've got the October 29th pep rally coming up. Yes, and, and we're really excited about that. And we're inviting the whole community exactly. in. We're going to have a big bonfire and get ready for men's and women's basketball. Um, but we're, you know, we're doing a lot of different things. We've got food trucks on campus now mm -hmm. to encourage people to come and have, you know, have something. We have a Starbucks, uh, and you know, a lot of people like Starbucks and like just to go hang out and have a cup of coffee or a pastry and uh, maybe take a walk. So, with the whole idea being that the university has to be part of your life if we're going to be successful. And that, that's what we're going to try to do with placemaking. Exactly. Well, I know for us at the Alumni Association, being in the Woodman Alumni Center right next door to the Starbucks, we have a lot of our meetings over there now. So a lot of alumni right. are coming in and, and are u using that space, and they may not have come on before onto campus. Well, and a lot of community so. people who have no other reason to be on campus will come, come for that. And we now have a Starbucks in, in the Radigan Exactly. Uh, and uh, a Freddy's. And, you know, we've got things here that people are used to seeing in the community. And that, that's really a conscious effort to say, we are of Wichita. We are you. Absolutely. Well, I've got a question um, kind of about our higher education roots. Um, we've been an institution of higher education since 1895. Mm. And... Academic pursuits are ever changing, and you've even spoken in front of Congress talking about some of the changes that are taking place. Would you speak about how the university is addressing the changing landscape of higher education? Sure. Let me, it's so complex. Let me kind of break it down into just a few things. And if people want to know more, I'll be happy to, sure. happy to talk about them. But let me talk about three things that we're doing. Uh, one is a Bachelor of Applied Arts. One is a Bachelor of Applied Science. And the third we call badges. All right, so let's talk about those three things. Bachelor of Applied Arts was created about a little, about a year ago, <clears throat> and at the time it went through the regions, uh, it was a degree that was supposed to be focused on taking our wonderful art and music programs and making them available commercially mm -hmm. out, in, out in the world. And uh, we have uh, the old Harry Street Mall that some people remember uh, from years ago was the place to shop before uh, some, of, some of the newer places. Uh, we've taken over part of that, and we have uh, Hollywood Quality Studios there. Well, we thought we'd open with about 35 students. <laughs> we opened with 60, and this fall we have 160. Wow. Uh, and so we're addressing the needs for production uh, across all kinds of platforms using this capacity, and it's pretty exciting. Um, our new Bachelor of Applied Science is coming out of our College of Applied Studies, which used to be education. Uh, it is now linked to the uh, our uh, Wichita State Tech, and we are going to be creating two plus two degrees mm -hmm. in a wide array of areas to meet the emerging needs of the economy. So uh, as we see things changing, uh, our folks will get together the folks at WSU Tech, and we'll put together the degree, take it to the regents, and have it available. The, uh, when we do talk about badges, mm -hmm. Uh, this is something that's caused a little confusion uh, because it is so different. But what we know is that 
lifelong learning is now real. Uh, we used to always talk about that and we pay it lip service and we talk about, well, I need to go do continuing education. You know what, I'm gonna go out, there's this really neat thing out in San Diego, I'll sign up in August, I'll fly out there. It's not the way it works anymore. It is education that has to be just in time for the specific set of skills you need. So what we've done is to create, I think this fall, 68 one half credit hour courses that people can take to build their skill sets in short bursts and allow them to create a track record of success that is on their transcript, that's real academic credit at higher learning commission standards, same standard we mm -hmm. use for everything else, and that they then have for the rest of their lives documenting that they've done this work. And as we get better and better at it, we'll broaden that and offer it across the world. Excellent. I've got a question here that's changing, changing the pace. Sure. And just as a reminder that you can submit questions and we're getting those live. So please feel free to send questions to us. Um, this is changing direction a little bit. Okay. So we've been in the American Athletic Conference for just over a year now. Mm -hmm. So how would you rate our first year, both academically and athletically? Well, actually, let me do the athletic part first because that's what's pretty simple. I think we were pretty competitive. I think we did a really pretty good job. And I think the... Um, <clears throat> the big lesson is that this is a serious conference. And right. so all of the coaches are going, wow, I didn't, you know, I knew this was good, but it's, <laughs> it's pretty good. But we ended up, I think, in, in most of our sports in pretty good shape. Yeah. Um, what to me has been more important is that if you look at the nature of the schools in the conference, they are schools like Wichita State. Uh, many of them are larger, uh, University of Houston, for example, University of Central Florida is one of the largest schools in the nation but they are of the same type. They're research universities, they're in urban settings. And so we're, these, the people who head these organizations are very well known, very experienced presidents and chancellors. Uh, the provosts, the athletic directors, all are people who have had great careers and worked their way into these wonderful universities. Mm -hmm. And so when I go to these meetings uh, or others go to the meetings, we're learning from the people who are there. And it's, it's wonderful to be part of a conference where you look forward to going to the meetings because of the quality of the people. Um, I also have heard that we are now part of a grant uh, with Tulane University, uh, at, with their medical school, and I don't believe that they would have even thought of us had we not been part of the conference. So it's already beginning to have some academic impact, but to me, the quality of the universities, the nature of the universities, and the quality of the personnel that I've met there made the transition really worthwhile. Fantastic. And I can speak from the Alumni Association point of view. Um, the peers that we have now in this conference have just been exceedingly welcoming and um, the level of uh, programming that's being done is, is fantastic. And so we're learning a lot from the Alumni Association side of things as well. Absolutely. So. And I want to be part of a group that I learn from. And Absolutely. I think most of us do. And this, this really has been the right move for us. Excellent. So I've got a question that just came in. Okay. Is there any momentum for WSU to add a law or medical school? Uh, no, okay. <laughs> there's not. Um, <laughs> law, law schools and medical schools tend to be pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's not really where the pressure is on us. Um, the pressure right now really is much more around engineering, materials, healthcare, uh, not the, the medical school part, but healthcare. Right. Uh, and we are partnering with KU Med. Uh, there is a talk of a possible osteopathic medical school in town. We would certainly posture, but we'd certainly partner with them if they sure. were here. But um, we really are going to continue and try to, try to build out our capacities in the areas where we are strong now. But the, the biggest transition that's going to hit this part of the world is going to be a massive change in the materials in which we make things, out of which we make things. And we're going to be spending a lot of time and effort on that. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to change it up a little bit okay. here. We're hearing a lot of talk about the Shocker sound machine, and I'm getting a lot of questions um, that, uh, is this the first step in getting a football team back? Yeah. And for those of those listening that don't know what the Shocker sound machine is, can you explain what it is yep. and where the whole idea came from? Sure. And dispel the rumors. 
Yeah, it's, <laughs> I would like to tell you that it was, I'm a football guy, so I would love to tell you that it's the first step to a football team, but it really isn't. Um, uh, we, I did a big uh, kind of a blunderbuss of uh, putting out a, pictures of a helmet and putting up a band uniform in my office to see what kind of interest we could get. Sure. And, uh, it's uh, everybody wanted a team, nobody wanted to pay for it. And uh, so I don't really see that happening in the short run. Uh, Soccer Sound Machine came from the folks of the School of Music, uh, and they came up with this idea of having the first basketball marching band in the country. And it was such a cool idea that uh, I went around, took up a collection from the VPs, and we got them the equipment and the, the uniforms. And uh, there will be about, a, now this year, not 100 kids, but as, as the units build out, there will be units of 100, and they will play at halftime at the, at the basketball games. And uh, they will do marching like they do on a football field, only the distances are shorter. Sure. Uh, but uh, the uniforms are really wild and uh, speak to youth, and it is all brass and, and percussion. So uh, it's going to be loud. It, it will be loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the arena will uh, will echo. Uh, so yeah, Coke Arena will be a special place. If you go out and get a hamburger, you'll miss something big. So so do uh, we have a debut date yet? Uh, we do, and I was going to tell you what it was, and then I was told it might not be that night. Okay, so, well we'll, so we'll I won't do keep that. everybody. Everybody right. will have to keep but, coming back for more yeah. to find out more. Well, what's been really fun is they've been marching around campus practicing. Uh, it has and, been fun to see them, and so. people have been talking about it. Yeah, so yeah. I'm excited for them. And it was something we needed. And I thought this was just a great solution. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I know that there's a lot of excitement around it. So. Yeah, and I'm excited about it because one of the things about students who do band is they care about it like people who do athletics. Uh, they tend to graduate about half of them will be in music and about half of them will be in whatever. They just sure. simply love band. Sure. And it leads you down the road to some other interesting things like drum and bugle corps, for example, which uh, in the summers can be highly competitive and can draw students to the university. So uh, they're using a drum and bugle corps approach to the band. So that might actually be the next step, though they haven't told me that, but that might be the next step. Excellent, excellent. Well, I know I'm excited to see you. Fun, yes. yeah. Um, you've been mentioning the possibilities of growing our enrollment and reach along the I-35 mm -hmm. corridor since you became president. What are some of the initiatives the university is undertaking now currently, and how are they paying off today? Yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's working better than, well, than the numbers might tell you. One, one of the things about enrollment, we always think about the freshmen coming in, mm -hmm. but enrollment's a very complex Thing. And it involves people returning to school, staying in school, right. international students coming into the university, graduate students coming into the university. Uh, so en enrollment has a lot of moving parts to it. And it was clear that the number of high school graduates in Kansas wasn't going to increase. And so it was going to be increasing competition for the universities here to get that what was going to either be a stable or dwindling number of people. So one of the things I, my specialty academically is I look at the structures of cities and regions. And so I looked at the structure of, of the region we're part of. And if you ship a product out of Wichita and it doesn't go overseas, it tends to go to Oklahoma City, Kansas City, Dallas, mm -hmm. uh, Tulsa. And so I asked the regions to allow us to combine our uh, our, our purposes as developers of the community with our purposes for enrollment and to allow us to charge in-state rates uh, to students who live in the metropolitan areas that we ship goods to. Uh, and if, you know, the, uh, one of our former competitors in our old conference used to wear t-shirts that said, Wichita is not a state. <laughs> right? And so I said uh, to the uh, folks and the executive team, uh, you know, let's, let's assume Wichita is a state. Everybody who gets in-state rates is part of the state of Wichita. We're the fifth largest state in the nation now. That's uh, fantastic. So, uh, we're right behind New York and ahead of Pennsylvania. Excellent. So, uh, and uh, we're asking the regions to allow us to expand that. Uh, so what this does, it allows the university to grow, which allows us to offer more things for people uh, to, to, to study. But it also brings people to Wichita, about a third of whom will stay in the area, 
uh, so that it builds our workforce, builds our labor force, and builds our community uh, with educated people. You know, I came out here as a young faculty member thinking I'd be here a year or two, and I met my wife here on campus and mm -hmm. been connected with Wichita State now for 43 years. Yeah. And that wasn't my intent when I came here, but that's, that's the way life is, and that's the way it works. So we figure if we keep doing this and keep expanding it, uh, we will, every time we graduate a class, about a third of the kids that we bring in uh, we'll stay in the area. Fantastic. Well, I have a question here um, okay. about the Shock the World campaign, which um, we are currently in the the largest campaign effort mm -hmm. in the school history. Um, and right now we have just received a very large cash gift for from the Woolsey family. And it's the largest individual cash gift that yes. WSU Foundation has ever received. Um, and that was just a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what are the plans for getting started on the new building and where will it be located? Okay, well, uh, they were just, they're just wonderful family. and They really are. And it's one of those times where uh, just everything works out. You know, they, uh, it, this, these are really nice, great people who have contributed their lives to, to Wichita. Yeah. And then, you know, now that they're older, they wanted to do something permanent. And I, I just, when, when Elizabeth and I walked out of that room, it's like, well, there couldn't have been <laughs> better people yeah. to do this. So, yeah. yes, it's a large gift, but what makes it really special are the people who gave it Absolutely. to us. And I, I'm just, uh, surely my, my hat's off to them. They they uh, committed here, they weren't from here. Right, they were from Texas right. originally, and uh, they, they made this their home and really have made it now, uh, they, they've contributed permanently. Leaving so, a legacy for sure. It really is special. And I just, I just I, you know, I say my hat's off to them. So what, what we're doing is we're raising about $30 million. We're very close to that now. And then the building, we will be adding $20 million to it so that we will get an entirely new business college. And it will be located on the new east part of campus, uh, and right, right near Nyar, okay. and right near the lake. And, the, and uh, it, the, uh, they're redesigning it now because, you know, it's one of those things that it takes a while to get something started. So sure. you build a design, and then, as you know, which you get closer, you, you redesign it. Um, but uh, as soon as we can finalize the money on it, we'll get it started and it will be on the uh, east part of the campus. Fantastic. Well, let's shift gears a little bit again and talk about the affiliation with WSU Tech. You mentioned it briefly yeah, earlier, yeah. Um, which was formerly WATC, for those that don't know. And it seems like there's just a little bit of confusion that I hear on the partnership and how it works. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see this playing out and how will it benefit students and the wider community? Can you just talk about sure. that relationship and the partnership? Sure. What, what's happening, um, and I spend a lot of time uh, uh, studying uh, what the world is t turning into, what's happening around us. And, and there was a time, uh, not long ago, and uh, uh, the people who are listening tonight probably lived in that time, went to school in that time, where you, uh, you chose. You went the trade school route or you went the university route. And, and that's no longer so. That's just not where the world is. Uh, the um, skill sets that it takes to be successful in life are becoming much more complex and they're changing rapidly. So as we started looking at that, uh, the question came up is, why is WAT, why are they separate? Why, why, are they, why are they distinct? And why are we making it hard for students to move back and forth? Mm -hmm. So I began a conversation with some of their board members and uh, the initial reaction was, eh, well, uh, we don't really wanna do that. And then probably six months later, they came back and said, hey, let's talk about this. And, and what, what we're really trying to do is to say, we don't really know what's coming. Uh, we don't know what the next big invention is. We don't know what the next big change in technology is that'll upend the world. But what we do know is that between technical education and liberal arts education and engineering education and health education, that among those things, we can put together a package that can serve the next generation of students well. But it's so much harder to do when you aren't related. Right. Because, you know, your board goes off one way, my board goes off another way, and then we have to try to figure out how to, how to mesh the two. So by them becoming an affiliate, uh, they are, I guess we're kind of a subsystem now of, right. of, of the Board of Regents. Um, their president uh, is a vice president here now. She's uh, vice president for workforce development. And uh, we plan together. 
So we, I meet with her every week, just like any other mm -hmm. of the vice presidents, and we walk through together what she's seeing, what we're seeing. Uh, her old governing board now advises me, and I've uh, attended the first two meetings since they've been part of us. Uh, and uh, you learn a lot by listening to the people who are out there slogging in the trenches every day. So what it allows us to do is to give you what you need. It allows us to be nimble. It allows us to make sure that you don't lose credits when you move from institution to institution. Sure. And it allows us to, tr to I mentioned earlier that Bachelor's of Applied Science degree, mm -hmm. well, they offer the Bachelor of Applied, uh, uh, they, uh, sorry, they offer the Associate, Associate of Applied sure. Science. And so we now can, can prepare together mm -hmm. so that students lose nothing as they go. Excellent. And, and so if you think about it, um, you might have thought, you know, uh, I want to be a welder, okay? They teach welding, they're good at it. And then you get welding and you go, well, wait a minute, I now have to supervise. Well, now I have to actually buy. And, and so we can help you move uh, through your life and through your career from being that person who you know, does the initial welding to being the person who runs the entire welding company. And, that, and we can do that increasingly seamlessly Excellent. and we can plan together. So that's, that's really what we're trying to accomplish. And what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing nationally is this is really the wave of the future. And you're gonna see uh, Georgia's doing this, Arkansas, I believe, has just done some of this. Tennessee is. Uh, as people begin to say, wait a minute, we don't know what's going to come. We don't really know what this is going to look like. So let's get enough arrows in the quiver that we've got, that sure. we can meet your need out there. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we are about out of time here, but we've covered a lot of ground tonight. Is there anything else you want to share? You know, I, I think um, just a couple of things, uh, just real quickly. Um, Wichita has been my home uh, since 1975 when my wife and I got married. And if you haven't been back to Wichita, you really do need to come back. This city is pretty cool. And Wichita State is becoming a driver of that cool. And it's something that we really value. Uh, that, you know, this university started, uh, you mentioned, started in 1895. And it was created by the Congregational Church mm -hmm. to educate the young people who couldn't afford to be sent east to go to the well-heeled schools. And as a result, from the beginning, it was part of the city. And it was here to educate the blacksmith's kid and the mm -hmm. milliner's kid and the teacher's kid. And we've kept that. And we've kept that notion that we are of Wichita. Um, so I think as we go and as we think about the future, uh, we're not losing our past. Uh, it will look different. Uh, it looks different than it did in 1895. But we are Wichita State. We are of Wichita. And that is driving who we are and where we're going. And as you love to say, and I will say, it is a wonderful day to be a shocker. It is a wonderful day to be a shocker. And I thank everyone. I thank you for participating and taking time because I know you have a very busy schedule with everything that's going on here. Um, everyone that was participating with us tonight uh, online and live, um, if you enjoyed this, let us know. We would consider doing it again. Absolutely. And, um, maybe expand it to other um, different people on campus. And so let us know your thoughts. If you have questions that you think of after um, the the live portion ends, please let us know. But thank you again. Thank you all for that joined us. And it is a great day to be a shocker. Good night.